Hello, I'm Aaron Matus with D1 Ticker here with another D1 Extra. Thrilled to be joined today by Florida A&M Athletic Director Courtney Gaucher. And Courtney, we're here to talk about postseason football. And I'll set the scene just a little bit. Right now, uh, you get tripped up by Jackson State, and that one loss could cost FAMU a postseason chance. And recently in the Tallahassee Democrat, an article was brought up that you guys should be pushing for access to the FCS playoffs if you're not, in fact, given a chance to go play in the Celebration Bowl. So I just want to start real broad because that sounds compelling and it sounds interesting. Is it reasonable? You know, uh, I would say that it's certainly reasonable, Aaron. And, uh, you know, for many reasons, uh, the article was right. You know, we are. Um, for all intents and purposes, going to make the push. Um, our student athletes deserve an opportunity to play uh, in a postseason competition. Uh, you know, we did come up a little bit short. We lost uh, by one point against a very, very good Jackson State team at, uh, in our first game this season uh, for returning to play for almost two years and not competing. And so uh, our, our, our young men deserve an opportunity. Uh, obviously, we're going to push the narrative and, and certainly push for those opportunities to come to fruition. But uh, I would say that the push isn't just because of the current circumstances. I think you've got to look at uh, the history and the pedigree of, of our football program. Um, we're the only HBCU who's won a 1AA national championship in 1978 under coach uh, Rudy Hubbard. Um, you know, look at our attendance. I know people are really, really excited about uh, the 55,000 people who attended a recent Jackson State game, but Florida A&M has always been in that category, uh, whether it be the Atlanta Classic or the Florida Classic in Orlando with crowds in the 70 and 80,000 marks. And so uh, we have a unique opportunity. Um, I think one of the challenges uh, of being an HBCU is in, in, for anybody in leadership at an HBCU is to continue to push for access and opportunities for our young people. Um, again, we wanna be in the field um, to, to have an opportunity to play postseason football. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there, there's one celebration bowl uh, that, that two teams uh, compete in. Um, I certainly think that that should be expanded. Uh, we're talking about equity, uh, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, I think that should be expanded. And I also think that um, additional access should be given uh, just considering circumstances like this one. Um, you know, we have a good football team. Um, and we, we're excited about what the next chapter looks like. Wanted to kind of ask you about that. That's, that. that's the obvious next question. If this were to happen, okay, let's say it does, then what would you like to see the change be? Should, should the prize be still the Celebration Bowl? And then should other teams qualify, then they go to the FCS playoffs? Or would you, do you see it as, as the opposite? where teams that qualify go to the FCS playoffs and the Celebration Bowl then gets to choose those that don't qualify? Well, you know, I think the circumstances around both are a little bit different. Um, being in the Celebration Bowl, there is a, you know, there is a there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and, and, a, and a, obviously a larger payout. Uh, the playoffs is a, is a different uh, financial mechanism. Um, you know, it requires uh, more onus on the institution up front, uh, which traditionally most HBCUs aren't in position to do. Um, I think that we've positioned ourselves uh, to be able to take on uh, the circumstances around competing in the playoffs. Uh, and so I, I think that the Celebration Bowl, again, is a, is a great mechanism uh, that has provided a lot of uh, exceptional student athletes a platform uh, to participate in a bowl game. Um, I think that it should certainly be expanded uh, for those HBCUs uh, who are in, in our category who have really good football programs um, and need more access uh, to provide these opportunities for these young people to showcase their talents. Uh, I think the playoff system does that. Uh, but again, if you really look at the historical data, how many HBCUs have been afforded those opportunities uh, who aren't a one bid league um, in, in the circumstances that are around that. And so as we're looking at this shift in intercollegiate athletics and mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what opportunities we're presenting to our young people. I certainly think this is a great example of why we certainly need to expand uh, that footprint and expand those opportunities for institutions like Florida A&M. It's an interesting 
conversation for sure. And, and you, you mentioned so much is changing right now in college athletics. So, so maybe the time is now to, to make a switch. And the final thing I would have for you along those lines is, do you worry at all? Or, or is this a conversation for further down the road about losing the, the tradition or, or hurting the tradition of the celebration bowl? Uh, if teams start taking the route to the FCS playoffs or can they coexist? I certainly think they can coexist. Um, you know, the playoffs is, is a really unique opportunity. And I, I again, remind you that Florida a and being the only HBCU uh, to have really accomplished that at a high level. Um, I think that it it's uh, a great opportunity to prepare your program, um, you know, for growth, um, you know, competing best versus best, um, you know, to be in a, in a, a platform like the playoffs that this untraditional, I think, Again, it, 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 you can get a true measuring stick for, um, you know, what's the what's on the other side for your department or your program. Um, I think the Celebration Bowl, just similar to the college football playoff, um, you know, it's a it's a different animal. Um, I, I think that, again, to have a national platform on, you know, the main platform such as ESPN in Atlanta to play in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, um, you know, is a dream come true for a lot of our student athletes. And so um, I think that they could certainly coexist. Um, you know, what I would actually advocate for is, um, you know, additional expansion in, in regards to bowl opportunities for HBCU. Celebration Bowl is great. Um, imagine if there were two of them. Um, you know, imagine, you know, again, um, the access that we would create for these young people who are in circumstances like our football team is in. And uh, I certainly hope uh, that, you know, should we take care of business and have an opportunity to get into the playoffs, um, you know, that the committee uh, recognizes the, the caliber program that we are, what we bring to the table um, and affords these young people an opportunity to do so. Um, you know, the margins are thin. The margins are really, really thin for us all, whether you're an HBCU or not. And uh, we're seeing that, you know, we lost by one point um, and that really, you know, changed the trajectory of where we may land um, and how our season may end. Well, it'll be fascinating to, to, to watch. And we wish you the best of luck as you as, as you do push for that. Uh, like we said, a lot of change happening in, in, in college sports right now. So how about one more big piece of change? We certainly appreciate you being here with us and best of luck with the season moving forward. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it.